Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to Health Talk, the live broadcast of Health Talk. Uh, coming to you live from the Garden State of New Jersey. My name is James, your host. I am also the host and narrator of Censored Returns, which is another internet talk show that we do based on past newsletters, censored newsletters uh, that was written and founded, of course, by the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Uh, I want to start the show by reading some uh, health-oriented newspaper articles from the past week that are from a local northeastern New Jersey well-established newspaper, The Bergen Record. Okay. The first article that I'm going to read before we go on to um, um, our health talk topics for the week. Uh, this one here is um, titled, 6,000 Hogs Set to Be Put Down May Have Eaten Tainted Pet Food. Here we go again, listeners, with the tainted pet food. I did these articles uh, in the past um, uh, recent health, health talks. There have been many articles since the many deaths that occurred due to the, um, the wheat gluten from China. Okay, 6,000 hogs set to be put down may have eaten tainted pet food by Rick Weiss, Washington Post News Service, Washington. And this came from the Bergen Record, uh, April 27, 2007, Washington. Federal and state authorities have identified 6,000 hogs in at least seven states that may have consumed contaminated pet food or pet food byproducts. And all the animals are slated to be euthanized to ensure they do not enter the human food supply. The Food and Drug Administration said Thursday. Officials said they are also looking into the possibility that some chickens may have eaten chow contaminated by the pet food, which they believe was tainted with chemicals imported from China. Uh, the disclosures are the latest in a string of recent surprises that have uh, brought home uh, to many Americans how complex and interconnected are the supply chains uh, linking imported pet food ingredients farm animal chow, and food for human consumption. Officials stressed that the human health risks of eating pork from animals fed the contaminated food were extremely low. The decision to keep those animals off the market and to reimburse farmers for the losses was made in the interest of extreme prudence, they said. FDA and Agriculture Department experts also revealed preliminary findings that may explain how low doses of the prime contaminant, the industrial chemical uh, melamine, considered only mild, mildly toxic, may have caused the deaths of some pets. A second contaminant found in the pet food, uh, cyanur cyanuric acid, when combined with melamine, appears to prompt the formation of crystals in urine. They said those crystals can cause kidney failure. It is unclear how the two chemicals found their way into pet food, but many experts suspect they were added uh, intentionally so that test results of the protein content of the food would be falsely elevated. Okay, and the uh, last article for this week's health talk. Um, let's see. Tainted pet food. Here's another one. Tainted pet food was fed to hogs, U.S. officials say. Okay, here's another article about that. It's not known whether meat entered human supply by Andrew Bridges, the Associated Press, Washington. 
salvaged uh, pet food contaminated with an industrial chemical was fed to hogs in as many as six states, federal health officials said Tuesday. It was not immediately clear if any of the hogs then entered the food supply for humans. Food safety officials said hogs at farms uh, in California, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, Utah, and possibly Ohio ate the contaminated products. Hogs at some of the farms, uh, it wasn't immediately clear which, uh, have been quarantined. The urine of some has tested positive for the chemical melamine and food and drug administration, the Food and Drug Administration said, uh, quote, at this point, I don't have a, a definitive answer other than to say that the issue is being addressed, unquote. Uh, Stephen Sunloff, the FDA's chief veterinarian, told reporters when asked if any of the hogs had entered uh, the human food supply. A poultry farm also may be involved, he added. Wonderful. (laughs) Uh, The FDA also said it planned to begin testing a wide variety of vegetable proteins at firms that imported the ingredients to make everything from pizza dough to infant formula. The protein shakes to um, energy bars. And protein shakes to energy bars. Uh, The ingredient uh, list includes wheat gluten, corn gluten, cornmeal, soy protein, and rice bran. Uh, Pet food companies have recalled more than 100 brands of cat and dog food since the first reports of animal deaths a little over a month ago. Investigators have found melamine in at least two imported Chinese vegetable proteins used to make pet foods. The chemical uh, possibly was used to skew analysis that measured the protein content of the ingredients, wheat gluten and rice protein concentrate. Uh, There were no direct uh, shipments of either of the two ingredients to firms that make food for humans or for animals used as food, said uh, Michael Rogers, who directs field investigations for the FDA. A second related chemical called cyanuric acid uh, also has been found to uh, contaminate rice protein concentrate samples. Sunloft said the analysis of the analysis the FDA plans to begin later this week will look at producers of both food for humans and animal feed, said Dr. David uh, Akison, the chief medical officer within the agency's Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. Uh, Akison stressed that uh, there was no evidence any of the other vegetable proteins had been contaminated, but that the FDA wanted to, quote, get ahead of the curve, unquote, and raise awareness among manufacturers. FDA officials said the hogs were fed salvaged pet food made with tainted rice protein concentrate. The food was given to the animals prior to the products. Recalls, Roger said. Rogers said. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> it doesn't surprise me. American companies can't, you know, buy all their food ingredients from a high quality, reliable source and get the very best quality ingredients that money can buy like certified organic uh, uh, ingredients, uh, wheat gluten, so on and so on, grains, uh, soy protein. No, they have to get it from the cheapest source. Regardless of what quality these food products um, are composed of. It's all about the bottom line, corporate America, isn't it? It's all about the bottom line at the expense of of human life and, in this case, animal life. 
So get your ingredients from China. And China probably can care less about the nature of what it imports to the beloved United States of America. So that's what happens. The bottom liners, the conservative corporate American bottom liners. <clears throat> All right, the next article before we start doing the uh, some best of health talks um, is, uh, well, I thought this was an applicable article for this time of year. It's now spring. It's... Um, it's very, um, you know, the, the, the merry month of May. May flowers is coming up very soon. And this is uh, the allergy season, of course. Uh, right now we have the, the uh, tree pollen at its peak. And then that will be followed by the grass pollen. And that's what gets me, the grass pollen. Um, for seasonal relief and antioxidant protection, quercetin is key. Quercetin is one of a class of compounds called flavonoids, which are plant-based substances that exhibit anti-inflammatory uh, and antioxidant properties. Quercetin is one of the most active uh, flavonoids that have been studied, and many of the beneficial properties of some foods may be derived from this compound. Common foods rich in quercetin include apples, especially the peel, green tea, onions, red wine, grapes, and citrus fruit. Other less commonly consumed foods include a variety of berries, including uh, lignin berry and cranberry. This multifaceted compound exhibits a variety of anti-inflammatory effects including um, inhibiting histamine release. Uh, histamine is responsible for many allergies, uh, allergy symptoms. Um, inhibiting release of, anti of inflammatory mediators by mast cells, white blood cells that are active in the inflammatory process, mast cells. Okay, inhibiting release of that. Um, and by acting as a vitamin C sparing antioxidant. For many years, quercetin has been used as a supplement to combat allergies. Quercetin is a key component of many allergy formulas, many natural allergy formulas uh, that are on the market. Um, uh, quercetin's uh, anti-inflammatory effects may also be used useful to promote healthy lung function, along with the allergy concerns. Quercetin has also been thought to have benefits against abnormal cells. In a study of quercetin combined with ultrasound, abnormal cells uh, from skin and prostate showed 90% mortality, while normal cells were not affected. It's also been shown in test tube studies to exhibit anti-estrogen effects and may be active against abnormal breast cells. Quercetin also appears uh, to promote a uh, healthy bladder function. Some people have pressure and pain in the bladder area with urinary urgency and frequency. In the absence of a urinary tract infection, this a uh, common problem afflicts many Americans, especially women. As reported in an article from the Tufts University School of Medicine, uh, recent evidence uh, from a pilot study suggests that quercetin may be beneficial for these people. An interesting study from Appalachian State University has also found that quercetin may help the body fight infections in stressed individuals. The source of stress was extreme exercise, in this case, cycling. Over a five-week period, only 5% of athletes who consume 1,000 milligrams per day of quercetin had illness, whereas 45% of athletes who consumed a placebo became sick. 
This is amazing when you consider that 900% more people became ill without the quercetin. It was also noted that the cyclists who took quercetin uh, better maintain their ability to uh, react to an uh, alertness test. Other studies have indicated quercetin is very powerful at promoting healthy cardiovascular function. Quercetin is an important compound found in nature but in small amounts. In order to promote optimal health, larger amounts of quercetin in supplements form appear to be beneficial. Okay. Um, let's see if there's any more information. That, that, that pretty much uh, wraps up quercetin. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, we're going to, well, we're going to do one more of these articles. I'd say after commercial and doing, after doing a best of, um, Health Talk. Let me just try to locate something here. Um, that will be good. Um, okay. You know what? I like this here. Um, I'm going to do... Um, strong bones need more than just calcium. I'll do that. I'll do that next. Uh, but first, uh, let us go to commercial with the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Uh, and then we'll do a uh, best of health talk. Let's see. Let us do, uh, before I read the article about calcium, we'll, we'll do lecithin and medicinal mushrooms. All right. Lecithin and medicinal mushrooms. Take it away, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Are you ready? Are you reaching your fitness goals working out on your own or with a training partner? Has your health club fulfilled any of the promises made before they took that expensive annual membership fee? After you paid the expensive annual health club membership fee, does it include any personal training? Save money and avoid the high cost of one-on-one -on -one personal trainers, nutritional consultants, health club sales packages. With this complete comprehensive fitness program with the website Personal Trainer. And are you sick and tired of all those low flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off? especially you ladies with long, thick hair. If so, then power your shower. These imported shower heads cannot be found in American stores. The website Personal Trainer and Power Your Shower can be found at www.megalife21.com. That's megalife21.com. Newsletter Censor has been taking on the five taboos of American life, sex, politics, religion, health, and child rearing for over 30 years. Newsletter Censor will give you the tools to defeat the conservatives, to uh, handle right-wing counterfeit Christians. If you'd like to learn more about Newsletter Censor, then go to NewsletterCensor.com. NewsletterCensor.com. And don't forget, listeners, you can hear Health Talk every Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from either www.pirateradionetwork.com or our website, www.megalife21.com. Uh, also, um, Health Talk will be replayed Saturdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can listen to the replay 
of the live broadcast that we do on Sundays. The very best way to be a part of this fine or well-established organization is to go to megalife21.com and click on the newslettercensor.com link uh, that is at our homepage and get the well-established over 30-year-old newsletter. Get your annual subscription to Newsletter Censored. It was founded by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman over 30 years ago. It's hard-hitting truth that you're not going to hear anywhere in today's conventional media or the press. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman with his army of what he calls his knowledge gnomes are constantly digging and, and searching for the real hard-hitting truth that you won't hear anywhere. Um, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman will reveal uh, information that uh, will defeat a conservative and right-wing counterfeit Christians. It's a newsletter of truth, enlightenment, fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman has four PhDs. He uh, is an ordained minister also. And uh, he has a PhD in um, theology and in divinity, in homeopathic medicine and in naturopathy. He also has a veterinary science diploma. Um, so this man, along with books that he is writing at this moment, uh, he did come out with the original book, How to Defeat a Conservative, and uh, his next book will be The God Project. But that is the best way to be a part of this organization. Get your annual subscription to the well-established 30-year-old newsletter, Newsletter Censored. And uh, please support our sponsors as well at megalife21.com. Now we return to our scheduled program. Okay, listeners. Oh, thank you very much, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Now let's go to a segment of the Best of Health Talk from the Best of Health Talk archives uh, titled Lecithin and the Medicinal Mushrooms. This week's health talk is going to be about, about lecithin and the medicinal oriental mushrooms. Lecithin, one of a family of fatty compounds called phospholipids is essential for building the membranes of every cell in the body. These membranes protect cells, interior structures, and also control the passage of nutrients and other substances in and out of cells. Without lecithin, the membranes would harden and the cells die. Lecithin is also found in the protective sheets surrounding nerve cells, neurons, and muscles. It also carries out essential metabolic functions, especially in helping to break down cholesterol and other lipids. It acts as an emulsifier, a substance that uh, helps fats, mixed with water and other fluids. Lecithin helps disperse cholesterol and other fats in body fluids so that they can be removed from the body rather than collect in clumps of fatty plaque in the artery walls. Lecithin is also a component of high-density lipoproteins, HDLs, the beneficial form of cholesterol that lowers the risk of heart disease. Lecithin is a major component of bile. 
The digestive juice that breaks down fats, low levels of lecithin in the bile, have been linked to an increased risk of gallstones. Lecithin is a rich source of choline, a chemically similar substance that is often classified as a B vitamin. Like lecithin, it is essential for maintaining cell membranes, and it is also used to make acetylcholine, a chemical neurotransmitter that carries nerve messages. Roll as a supplement. Ironically, some of the best dietary sources of lecithin, eggs, organ meats, and animal fats have been implicated as culprits in heart disease, obesity, and other health problems. So as Americans reduce their intake of these foods, lecithin supplements may be needed uh, to compensate for the dietary shortfall. Lecithin supplements are also rich in choline, and these two closely related substances are promoted to lower blood cholesterol levels and to treat liver and gallbladder disease. Lecithin may also protect against heart disease by reducing the risk and severity of atherosclerosis, the clogging of coronary and other arteries with fatty deposits. It may also play a role in preventing age-related memory loss and slow progression of Alzheimer's disease. Evidence of efficacy. Although lecithin is an essential component of all body cells, many of the health claims made for lecithin supplements are unproved, at least in humans. But some animal studies have involved closely related uh, primates with promising results. For, for example, an eight-year study using baboons indicated that lecithin may protect against alcohol-induced sclerosis, which is a progressive scarring of the liver. Both groups of animals were fed diets high in alcohol the major cause of sclerosis in humans. About 80% of the baboons who did not receive lecithin developed the liver disease, compared to none of those getting the supplements. Human studies also indicate that lecithin may increase the effectiveness of some cholesterol-lowering drugs, such as Clofibrate. It also seems to protect the stomach and intestines against damage from aspirin, ibuprofen, and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In one study involving 20 patients who suffered heartburn and stomach pain from uh, non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs, 15 achieved complete relief of symptoms when they took lecithin along with the painkillers. Sources, soybeans and egg yolks are rich in lecithin. It is also added to ice cream, mayonnaise, salad dressing, spreads, and many other processed foods to prevent fats and fluids from separating. Other dietary sources include liver and other organ meats, muscle meat, wheat germ, and peanuts. Forms and usual dosage. Most lecithin supplements are a mixture of phospholipids obtained from soybeans. Uh, forms of the supplements include capsules, soft gels, pills, powders, granules, and liquid. The powder and granules can be sprinkled on foods or added to shakes. The typical dosage calls for three to five grams of lecithin a day.
potential problems. Lecithin is generally safe, although very high doses may cause bloating, diarrhea, nausea, and other intestinal symptoms. What to look for? Check the labels for a high content of phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylserine uh, lecithin derivatives that are the active ingredients. Okay, the next uh, and last topic for this week's health talk is uh, the uh, mushroom extracts, the Asian medicinal mushroom extracts. In traditional Chinese medicine, mushrooms are more than tasty, low-calorie foods. They are also sources of important natural medications. There are hundreds of different mushrooms or fungi along with molds and yeasts. They are classified as lower organisms because they reproduce through spores rather than seeds. So they're really not, they're neither in, classified as an animal or a uh, plant. They're, they're kind of a, a little bit of both, actually. Species all, all, all their own, okay? fungi. What we commonly call the mushroom is actually the fungus's fruiting body and it represents the reproductive phase of its life cycle. Mushrooms grow worldwide and there are thousands of different uh, varieties. Some are parasitic, existing on living plants and other hosts. Many form symbiotic relationships with their hosts. For example, some of the mushrooms that grow on or near trees provide minerals and water for their hosts in exchange for other nutrients. The fruiting bodies of some mushrooms last for only a few hours, while others persist for months or even years. Some such as the familiar button mushrooms are easily cultivated, but many of the most desirable can grow only in the wild. Since ancient times, humans have gathered wild mushrooms, using them for food and medicines. Of course, not all wild mushrooms are safe to eat. In fact, many are highly poisonous. Some of these poisons, such as the uh, ibotenic acid in the Amanita muscaria species, are used as recreational hallucinogens, a practice that can be risky indeed. The mushrooms used most often for medicinal purposes are the cordyceps, Sinentis, the shiitake, which is known as lentinula edodes, the reishi mushroom, which is uh, Ganoderma lucidium, the maitake mushroom is Griffola frondosa, silver ear mushroom is Tromella fusiformis and hoellen, which is known as a poria, cocos. Roll as a supplement. Since ancient times, various mushroom extracts have been used medicinally. In modern times, some of our first antibiotics were extracted from fungi. Cyclosporin, a drug that is given to transplant patients to suppress the immune system and prevent rejection of the new organ was originally derived from a fungus that uses insects as a host. Today, mushroom extracts are said to bolster immunity and help prevent cancer or inhibit tumor growth. 
common disorders and the mushroom extracts that are said to be effective in treating them include the following. Anti-inflammatories, reishi and silver ear, asthma and bronchitis, cordyceps, reishi and silver ear, cardiovascular disorders, cordyceps, shiitake, reishi and silver ear. Cholesterol-lowering extracts, cordyceps, shiitake, reishi, and silver ear. Diabetes, maitake, and silver ear. High blood pressure, cordyceps, shiitake, reishi, maitake, and silver ear. Improved kidney function, cordyceps and reishi. Liver disorders, cordyceps, shiitake, reishi, maitake, silver ear, and hoelin. Stress reduction, cordyceps and reishi. Viral infections, cordyceps, shiitake, reishi, and hoelin. Evidence of efficacy. More than 280 reports of scientific studies related to the medicinal uses of mushroom extracts have been published in recent years. Most of these studies have been conducted in Asia and Europe, but there is growing interest in mushroom extracts in the United States. Studies conducted here and abroad have uh, documented the antibiotic properties of certain mushroom extracts. Recently, there has been increasing interest in using mushroom extracts to bolster immunity, especially among people who are HIV positive. A number of researchers are also investigating the anti-tumor properties of some mushrooms with hopes of developing anti-cancer drugs. In fact, mushroom extracts are widely used as adjuncts to cancer treatments in Japan and China. More research is needed, however, to prove these various health benefits and to develop effective drugs from mushroom extracts. Sources. The most widely used mushroom extracts are obtained from the species listed above uh, that I mentioned before. They may be obtained from health food stores and outlets specializing in traditional Asian medicines. Forms and usual dosages. Mushroom extracts are available in liquid powder and pill form. Dosages vary according to the usage. Follow label instructions. Some experts, including Dr. Andrew Weil, the noted uh, proponent of integrative uh, medicine, advocate uh, including a variety of mushrooms in the diet. Potential problems. As noted, many wild mushrooms are poisonous, and because so many mushrooms look alike, it's a good idea to leave uh, gathering wild mushrooms to the experts. Some mushroom extracts may interact with pharmaceutical medications. Check with your doctor before taking them, especially if you are being treated for a chronic disease. What to look for? Take only extracts that are made from edible mushrooms and buy them from uh, reputable outlets. Uh, personally, when it comes to uh, medicinal standardized herbal extracts, I usually look to the company uh, Nature's Way 
before I look to any other company. Uh, Nature's Way, uh, which was founded by, uh, I believe, a Dr. J uh, um, John R. Christopher, uh, a famous um, uh, herbalist, herbal physician from many years ago. Uh, I believe he popularized uh, herbal medicine or rediscovered herbal medicine. Uh, in the United States and he founded the Nature's Way Company or at least the original formulas were based on his original uh, protocols but it is the uh, the primary uh, standard of excellence when it comes to uh, to herbal uh, products as far as quality goes uh, another um, very popular um, natural scientist by the name of Dr. Heinemann, who has uh, several outstanding books out there, uh, also uh, promotes uh, Nature's Way products because of their quality, not for any, you know, financial reasons. Uh, so, anyway, that concludes this week's Health Talk. Uh, Reverend Dr. William Eisman, would you like to make any comments about uh, this week's health talk uh, at all? Would you like to say anything? Okay. That concludes that segment of the Best of Health Talk. Now let's go to commercial. Before I read the article on calcium and strong bones, we'll go to commercial with the one and only commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Morrow III. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. If you're one of those people who are sick and tired of taking a shower with those annoying low flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, then check out Power Your Shower. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. Stop paying full retail prices for uh, brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. Just simply go to www.megalife21.com, then click on the drop down menu, then click on website personal trainer, and you'll see a, a banner at the top of the page. Click on that and start saving up to 75% of brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. If you are a, a United States uh, based uh, fundraising organization, get the ticket that sells itself, professional wrestling. Here at the Ultimate Fundraiser, we have a family oriented, star studded, action packed, professional wrestling show that the whole family can enjoy. We will even travel to your area in the country if you purchase the entire show. If you purchase the entire show as a fundraising organization, uh, you can keep all the profits, 100% of the profits on ticket sales and the sale on food and beverage also. So, if you're looking for the ultimate fundraiser, go to www.megalife21.com, click on the drop-down menu, and click on the ultimate fundraiser. And now, back to our regular live scheduled show. Okay, we're back, and um, I am going to read an article here. Let's see. T 
titled um, Strong Bones Need More Than Just Calcium. Time flies by so fast. Uh, we're, we're well into winter. And uh, with Groundhog Day looming, spring may be just a few short weeks away. Okay, I guess this article was written in the winter of this year. By now, I suspect many of you have given up on your New Year's resolutions. Yeah, that's for sure. A lot of most people do. Let me encourage you to go back to them. Whether you promised yourself you'd lose weight, exercise more, or spend more time spend more quality time with your family. There have been some interesting studies in the medical literature published recently in the December 2006 Journal of Clinical um, Endocrinology and Metabolism. Uh, Yale researchers studied uh, effects of magnesium supplementation in 44 girls uh, ages 8 to 14. Uh, they were randomized to receive either 300 milligrams of magnesium or placebo daily for one year. It was estimated that the girls typically had magnesium intakes of less than 220 milligrams a day prior to the study. Uh, at the end of that, at the end of the trial, it was found that girls given magnesium had significantly greater bone mineral uh, content in the hip compared to those taking placebo. Um, spinal bone mineral content was also greater, although not to a significant degree. The mineral was well tolerated with just a few girls getting diarrhea. That, of course, is due to the fact that a lot of popular laxatives are made from forms of magnesium, like citric of magnesia, milk of magnesia. The magnesia, of course, is magnesium. Uh, even Epsom salt, which um, is way too harsh. Uh, there is a little recipe on the, on the carton about using it for a laxative, but I do not advise it. I mean, uh, that's magnesium sulfate. And magnesium is also an outstanding muscle relaxer, and that's why Epsom salt works. It transdermally gets into your uh, muscle tissue and relaxes you. <coughs> relaxes the uh, muscle spasms. Okay. Lead study author, Dr. Thomas Carpenter, noted, quote, There is strong evidence that young U.S. women aren't getting enough magnesium and that the number who are deficient in the mineral is on the rise. Unquote. Uh, other studies have indicated many people are magnesium deficient at the cellular level and need supplementation to promote healthy brain, bone, and cardiovascular health. Another amazing nutrient is vitamin K. Uh, this vitamin has been generally underappreciated. In recent years, researchers have linked uh, several health concerns with poor vitamin K intake. It appears that inadequate vitamin K intake has been associated with abnormal calcification in the arteries. In an article published in the current opinion, uh, Clinical uh, Nutrition Metabolic Care in January 2007, um, Tufts University researchers um, noted that evidence is emerging to support recommendations to increase intake of um, uh, vitamin K among the elderly to reduce bone loss and fracture risk. Finally, uh, I'd like to report on an interesting study published December 2006 in the Journal of uh, Digestive Diseases uh, Sciences. Um, now, this was written by a neurologist. Uh, I quote, I periodically see patients with poor um, liver function. When the liver fails, toxins, especially ammonia, which can be very harmful to the brain, can build up in the bloodstream uh, in this study. 24 patients with high blood levels of ammonia affecting brain function 
were enrolled following a random randomization. They received either acetyl L-carnitine, ALC, or a placebo. Two patients in the placebo group had improvement of neurologic findings um, with one case of improved uh, electroencephalogram uh, EEG grading. In the other group, there was improvement of neurologic findings in 10 of the 13 patients with improvement in EEG findings in 8 of the 13. It should be noted that improvement in neurologic function uh, was evident between 1 and 4 hours after supplementation and remain uh, up to 24 hours thereafter. Uh, as you're aware, I've mentioned numerous benefits of um, acetyl L-carnitine um, based on thousands of published medical studies over many decades, as far back as the 1960s. Uh, quote, uh, this is a ne neurologist uh, uh, talking. I consider this a core nutrient everyone uh, should take along with alpha lipoic acid and coenzyme Q10. Um, acetyl L carnitine has been clearly proven to provide energy to cells with uh, per particular benefits in the brain. I recommend 1,000 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams per day of acetyl L carnitine, along with 300 to 600 milligrams per day of um, alpha lipoic acid and 200 to 400 milligrams per day of coenzyme Q10 for optimal health. If you have specific brain health concerns, the most recent studies indicate coenzyme Q10 at 1,200 milligrams per day is optimal. Um, a rather diverse group of articles this week. Uh, it's very important for all of us to maintain adequate nutrients in our bodies to uh, promote health and fight free radicals. The best way to do this is with a superior and uh, far above average uh, multivitamin. Uh, hopefully one that is very comprehensive of course with, with uh, at least moderate uh, dosages of the vitamins and minerals instead of the ridiculous, ridiculously minuscule uh, levels in uh, some of the common pharmaceutically company made multivitamins like your uh, your centrums and your uh, your one a days that the companies like that that your uh, your standard typical drug pushing medical doctors your family practitioners uh, tend to recommend okay you got to go to a uh, a health food um, retailer um, to acquire such optimal uh, multivitamins like let's say the vitamin shop vitacost.com um, uh, GNC um, I mean uh, the, if you go to um, our website megalife21.com and just simply click on uh, website personal trainer you'll see a banner up on top You'll get um, you'll get near wholesale prices on nationally advertised uh, nutritional supplements as well as many very high quality uh, nutritional products. And there's some really great multivitamins there for men and women that are optimal in dosage. Um, okay, that takes care of uh, the, that article uh, and now we're going to move on to um, the next best of health talk and uh, this best of health talk is going to be about ginseng the, the, the king of herbs as they like to call it Herbs of all time. 
definitely uh, one of the top few herbs in existence in terms of uh, popularity. Uh, it is definitely one of the finest all-round tonics uh, for the body for health maintenance, and that herb is ginseng. Ginseng is a potent adaptogenic herb that has been used the world over throughout history. There are several different types of ginseng, all adaptogens, including Korean, Chinese, Siberian, and American. Adaptogenic herbs primarily act as stress fighters by restoring homeostasis. A growing body of peer review literature supports such actions. One review article examining over 300 studies on ginseng published in China since 1982 found ginseng to possess a large variety of therapeutic effects on the body, including benefits to the central nervous system, cardiovascular system, and endocrine secretion, immune function, stress, aging, etc. Chinese ginseng preparations have exhibited protective effects against experimentally induced stress in mice. Another study found that Vietnamese ginseng crude saponin suppressed the effects of psychological stress in mice. Ginseng therapy restored the th thyroid and adrenal functions exhibited by dexamethasone treatment in rats. In a study examining the anti-aging activities of American ginseng in those over 60, results show that symptoms of kidney-yang uh, deficiency improved and subjects experienced a decrease in functional months of age from 751.77 plus 5.215 to 743.53 plus 5.144, the effective rate being 68.57%. The intake of 50 milligrams tablets of ginseng rhizome taken three times a day for two months exhibited anti-senility effects and led to the relief of age-related symptoms in a group of middle-aged and elderly subjects. In addition to these findings, the treatment has significant benefits with respect to coronary heart disease. Ginseng has also exhibited direct anti-aging effects on rats. Korean red ginseng has exhibited positive effects on immune markers in subjects infected with HIV. Panax ginseng administered at doses of 100 milligram capsules of either an aqueous or standardized extracts led to significant enhancement of cell-mediated immune functions in healthy volunteers. Animal and in vitro studies have pointed to the benefits of ginseng on the immune system as well. Cancer and heart disease are two other areas where ginseng has proven useful. Results of one Korean case control study showed an inverse association between oral intake of different types of ginseng and the risk of various cancers in humans, including lip, oral cavity, uh, pharynx, esophageal, stomach, colon rectal, liver, pancreatic, uh, laryngeal, laryngeal lung and ovarian. A large-scale trial by the same authors found a significant inverse association between the consumption of ginseng and risk of gastric and lung cancer in adults over the age of 40. An earlier study also revealed an inverse association between a history of ginseng intake and the risk of cancer. Ginseng extract and powder proved more effective than fresh sliced ginseng the juice, or tea, in reducing cancer risk. Results from animal and in vitro studies support such findings. As to heart disease, one study found that red ginseng was a safe and effective treatment in patients suffering from congestive heart failure and proved to be synergistic with uh, digoxin in inhibiting even stronger improvement of hemodynamical and biological indexes. Total ginsenoside, uh, 
and ginsenoside RB have been shown to protect against myocard myocardiac ischemia and reperfusion injuries in open heart surgery patients. Injections of ginseng principles, fraction four, can reduce elevated plasma levels of cholesterol and triglyceride. Panax ginseng delayed experimentally induced impairment of rat, heart, mitochondria, and muscle contraction deterioration. Ginsenocytes have attenuated ischemic myocardium and protect, protected against reperfusion injury of myocardium in dogs. Wisconsin ginseng root powder added to the diet was effective in lowering total serum cholesterol levels in chickens. Numerous animal studies have pointed to the possible benefits of using ginseng to improve cognitive function, particularly memory and learning. The same is true for diabetics. In a study of newly diagnosed non-insulin dependent diabetics, intake of 100 to 200 milligrams per day of ginseng for eight weeks, elevated mood, improved psych psychophysical performance, and reduced fasting glucose and body weight. The 200 milligram dose improves glycated hemoglobin serum uh, oh, P111NP and physical activity. Other conditions ginseng may benefit include stroke, sleepwalking disturbances, ulcers, kidney damage, and narcotic addiction. In addition, Panax ginseng has been shown to be capable of enhancing the rate of blood alcohol clearance in healthy men. The consumption of two capsules containing a preparation of ginseng extract, methylmethanol bitartrate, vitamins, minerals, and trace elements per day for six weeks, increased work capacity due to improved muscular oxygen utilization in healthy male sports uh, teachers. The administration of Korean red ginseng has significant positive effects with respect to penile rigidity and girth, libido, and subjective reports of satisfaction relative to controls in men suffering from erectile dysfunction. Okay, uh, Reverend Dr. Bill, would you like to make any comments about this uh, exciting uh, yet ancient herb, ginseng? Okay. All right. That um, that concludes that um, best of health talk. Uh, after commercial, we will do aloe vera and green tea. Uh, right after commercial, with the um, Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman. Take it away, Reverend Doctor. Are you reaching your fitness goals working out on your own or with a training partner? Has your health club fulfilled any of the promises made before they took that expensive annual membership fee? After you paid the expensive annual health club membership fee, does it include any personal training? Save money and avoid the high cost of one-on-one -on -one personal trainers, nutritional consultants, 
health club sales packages. With this complete, comprehensive fitness program with the website Personal Trainer. And are you sick and tired of all those low, low shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off? Especially you ladies with long, thick hair. If so, then power your shower. These imported shower heads cannot be found at American stores. The website Personal Trainer and Power Your Shower can be found at www.megalife21.com. That's megalife21.com. Newsletter Censored has been taking on the five taboos of American life, sex, politics, religion, health, and child rearing for over 30 years. Newsletter Censored will give you the tools to defeat the conservatives, to uh, handle right-wing counterfeit Christians. If you'd like to learn more about Newsletter Censored, then go to NewsletterCensored.com. NewsletterCensored.com. Thank you very much, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Now, we go to our next Best of Health Talk from the Best of Health Talk Past Archives. And this one is on aloe vera and green tea. Two very, very prominent, very important uh, medicinal herbs, along with other very important herbs like uh, like garlic and, um, um, and and many others. All right. Health talk is about aloe vera and green tea. Aloe has been considered a miracle plant by cultures the world over for thousands of years. It is approximately 96% water with the balance of its active contents consisting of essential oil, amino acids, vitamin, minerals, and enzymes. Aloe's primary strength as a healing agent lies in the fact of it being able to regenerate damaged tissues such, act such actions have long made it a powerful therapy for wounds such as burns, cuts, bru and bruises. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. A traditional remedy for diabetes in the Arabian Peninsula. Severe peer review studies indicate aloe may indeed be an effective treatment for symptoms associated with the disease. In one, results showed the intake of half a teaspoon of aloe daily for 4 to 14 weeks. Significantly reduce the fasting serum glucose level in all patients. Fasting plasma glucose was significantly reduced in diabetic mice by glybenclamide and aloes after three days as well. Another study found that five non-insulin dependent diabetics experienced a mean reduction in fasting blood sugar of 273 to 251 milligrams following 14 weeks of taking a half teaspoon four times daily of aloe. In a five year trial of 5,000 atheromatous heart disease patients results showed that dietary intake of husk of asabgol and aloe vera to the diet led to a marked reduction in total serum cholesterol, serum triglycerides, fasting, and postprandial blood sugar levels in diabetic patients. Clinical profiles showed decreased frequency of anginal attacks and gradually the drugs like verapamil, nifedipine, beta blockers, and nitrates were tapered. Animal experiments support such findings with respect to the potential of aloe as a valuable therapy for diabetic, diabetes and have demonstrated its anti-cancer properties and ability to inhibit arthritis in rats a host of studies indicate aloe can produce strong anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and wound healing effects. 
Aloe has also been used successfully as a laxative. May be effective for ulcers and can protect against skin damage when used topically. Current research points to aloe's potential as an effective immune system booster and possible treatment against AIDS. Okay, our second half of Health Talk this week is about green tea. The cancer-fighting effects of green tea on animals and in vitro are well documented in the scientific literature. Human studies also point to its potential benefits in this regard. In one case control study, smoking, alcohol, and green tea were examined as a potential stomach cancer risk factors in patients already diagnosed with the disease. Results showed smoking of cigarettes and the consumption of alcohol were associated with an increased risk of stomach cancer. While an inverse association was found between the consumption of green tea and stomach cancer. Another study examined the effects of green tea consumption on the risk of esophageal cancer in a group of 902 esophageal cancer patients between the ages of 30 and 74. Results showed green tea consumption had a significant dose-dependent protective effect against esophageal cancer in women and significant protective effects in male and female smokers. A population-based case-controlled inquiry into the effects of drinking green tea on the, on the risk of stomach cancer in subjects under the age of 80 showed an inverse association between the two variables. Regular consumption of green tea may counteract the ill effects of mutagens and or carcinogens produced in meat cooked under high temperature. Green tea extract inhibits gastrointestinal malignant tumors in humans. Green tea may also be effective against heart disease. In a study of 1,371 Japanese men over 40, results showed an inverse association between the daily consumption of green tea and serum cholesterol levels. Consumption of more than 10 cups per day was correlated to the reduced concentration of hepatological markers in serum aspartate, aminotransferase, alanine transferase, and ferritin. A study of 1,306 Japanese males found total serum cholesterol levels to be inversely related to the consumption of green tea. Dental health is another area where green tea has, has shown promise. Japanese green tea's polyphenolic compounds can inhibit the attachment of Streptococcus mutans strain JC-2 to saliva-coated hydroxyapatide discs. Rats infected with S mutans, JC-2, and fed a cariogenic diet and or drinking water containing green tea polyphenols have exhibited fewer caries than did controls. Chinese green tea polyphenols are effective preventative agents against dental caries. Fluoride in green tea may increase the karyostatic action in combination with other properties in the tea. Extracts of green tea has also exhibited antibacterial action against 24 bacterial strains isolated from root canal infections. Green tea may also help prevent stroke. Results of a four-year follow-up study of 5,910 Japanese women who neither smoked nor drank alcohol showed that the rate of stroke and cerebral hemorrhage was at least twice as high as those consuming less than five cups of green tea daily compared to those consuming five or more cups per day. In a cohort study aimed to elevate the effect 
of drinking green tea on longevity involving 3,380 female practitioners of Chanoyu, a Japanese tea ceremony, living in Tokyo, standardized mortality ratios were estimated 0.55 when all Japanese women were used as standard population and 0.57 when women living in Tokyo were used, indicating the possibility that green tea is a protective factor for several fatal diseases. Both green and black tea exhibited antioxidant effects on tissue lipid peroxidation in rats. Other conditions green tea can benefit include liver damage, pancreatitis, and diarrhea. Green tea, uh, Reverend Dr. Bill, is um, probably the most commonly consumed beverage in the world, considering the, uh, the um, Asian population as a whole, uh, Japan, China. Green tea's uh, antioxidant power in its polyphenol content uh, is, um, works very similar to the proanthocyanidin in um, pycnogenol, which is pine bark extract, and grapeseed extract. It's actually related uh, to the uh, polyphenol family. The proanthocyanidin, proanthocyanidins are polyphenols, just like the polyphenols found in green tea are called catechins. Uh, they're all members of that bioflavonoid family, which have been proven to be the most effective, strongest antioxidants known to man. Uh, Cancer cells have actually been uh, destroyed and tumors have been shrunk uh, by the um, natural uh, phytochemicals found in green tea. It's, I definitely uh, drink green tea every day. Uh, I make it very strong um, and I drink quite a bit of it. So uh, Reverend Dr. Bill, would you like to make any comments about this week's health talk in regards to aloe vera? and green tea. Okay. Okay, listeners. That concludes the segment on aloe vera and green tea. Uh, now we're going to go to commercial with... Uh, William H. Morrill III, and the next health talk topic is going to be called Health Talk, The Basics. Take it away, William Morrill. Hi, this is William Morrill. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? then the website personal trainer is for you. If you're one of those people who are sick and tired of taking a shower with those annoying low-flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, then check out Power Your Shower. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. Stop paying full retail prices for uh, brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. Just simply go to www.megalife21.com, then click on the drop-down menu, then click on Website Personal Trainer, and you'll see a, a banner at the top of the page. Click on that and start saving up to 75% of brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. If you are a, a United States-based uh, uh, fundraising organization, get the ticket that sells itself, professional wrestling. Here at the Ultimate Fundraiser, we have a family-oriented, star-studded, action-packed, professional wrestling show that the whole family can enjoy. We will 
even travel to your area in the country if you purchase the entire show. If you purchase the entire show as a fundraising organization, uh, you can keep all the profits, 100% of the profits on ticket sales and the sale on food and beverage also. So if you're looking for the ultimate fundraiser, go to www.megalight21.com, click on the drop down menu and click on the ultimate fundraiser. And now back to our regular live scheduled show. Okay. Okay, listeners, now for the next Health Talk topic from the best of Health Talk, uh, the basics. Health Talk, the basics. For our next segment. This week's uh, Health Talk is called The Basics. Slowing down the aging process begins with attention to lifestyle. This includes a sound diet, a regular exercise program, a means of cleansing the system, and a way to relax from too much stress. Diet. Staying youthful is synonymous with staying healthy, and staying healthy is controlled to a large degree by daily habits of eating. Dr. Hans Kugler, president and founder of the International Academy of Alternative Medicine and author of Tripping the Clock, a practical guide to anti-aging and rejuvenation offers these dietary guidelines. Know your daily caloric maintenance level. Know the amount of calories you need to maintain your ideal weight. Then you can easily make adjustments for weight gain or weight loss as needed. Vary the amount of food you eat according to the time of day. Eat like a king at breakfast, a prince at lunch, and a pauper at dinner. Reduce overall fat and sugar intake. Eliminate refined carbohydrates from your diet. Eat lots of complex carbohydrates, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods are the building blocks of good health. They are discussed in more detail below. Have lean or non-fat protein at every meal. Though important, we now know that more is not better. We do not need vast amounts of protein as we once thought. Rather, we should distribute small amounts of protein throughout the day. Include organically grown foods in your diet. Chemically laden foods are a burden to the body. Even small amounts of toxins accumulate and eventually wear it down. Be kind to your body by keeping the diet as pure as possible. Healthy foods rejuvenate the life force by supplying the body with multiple anti-aging nutrients. They also help to resist the onset of disease. Most cancer is diet related and may even reverse chronic conditions. Dolores Riccio author of Superfoods for Life, says the best foods are those given to us in nature. Fruits and vegetables. Most fruits and vegetables contain valuable nutrients for anti-aging. Especially noteworthy are the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, radishes, and watercress for their anti-cancer properties. Melatonin for immune boosting and better sleep is found in bananas, corn, and tomatoes. Chromium helps regulate insulin and can be found in apples, broccoli, grapes, raisins, mushrooms, and potatoes. Magnesium defends against asthma and heart disease. And it is also a memory booster. Good fruit and vegetable sources include avocados, bananas, and dark green vegetables. Vitamin E's helper, selenium, is found in onions, shallots, mushrooms, and garlic. 
These foods help the heart and keep the skin elastic. Intense color and flavor indicate health-giving properties. Dark green and orange vegetables, for example, are high in carotene, which protects against cancer. And bitter greens help the liver. Citrus fruits, such as oranges, lemons, and grapefruits, help rid the body of free radicals, keep the skin young looking and accelerate healing. Grains and legumes, these fiber rich foods keep our digestive tracts healthy. They are high in B vitamins, which work to support the brain and rich sources of vitamin E, making them good for the heart and skin. In addition, whole grain fibers such as brown rice contain zinc for nourishment of the male reproductive system and repair of the body. Oils, contrary to common trends, we all need some fat in our diets. A teaspoon a day of monounsaturated fats are essential for keeping the brain and heart functioning properly, for protecting our appearance, for raising HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and lowering LDL, the bad cholesterol, and for keeping our hair and skin from becoming dry. Good sources of monounsaturated fats are olive and canola oil. Avoid saturated fats, those found in potato chips, meats, cheeses, coconut, and palm oil. Even though now the recent information uh, states that the, uh, the coconut and palm oils are actually uh, much better and healthier than people once thought, even though they contain a, a vegetable source of saturated fat, there are other fatty acids uh, that are present in them are, are medicinal and, and very beneficial to uh, health. Polyunsaturated fats, like those found in flaxseed oil and fish, are precursors for omega-3s, such as DHA and EPA, which prevent clotting of blood and stickiness of platelets. Research shows that these fats can get into the blood vessels and stabilize plaque. People who eat one fish meal a week have a 50% reduction of sudden deaths over people who don't. Healthy sources of fish are deep water migratory fish, like salmon, halibut, and cod. The benefits of soy. Soybeans and soybean products are a staple of Japanese diets, and for good reason. Scientific research has identified healing agents in soybeans called glycosides. Glycosides contain substances that protect the cell from oxidation from the low-density lipoproteins found in bad cholesterol. Rather than rely on hamburgers, pork, dairy, chicken, and other animal sources for protein, uh, these foods are high in saturated fats that damage tissues. We should use high-protein soy products often. The subject of exercise. Generally, the older we become, the more frail we get. We tend to lose muscle mass which results in an inability to perform many physical tasks. While most of us accept this as the norm, it does not have to be so. In fact, according to Dr. Kugler, one of our most important anti-aging goals should be to prevent the loss of muscle mass. When real old people shovel along, think that a wind will blow them over. That's because they have lost their muscle mass, the prime substance for maintaining many bodily functions, from blood sugar regulation to mood control to physical activity. Contrary to popular belief, muscle mass can be gained at a later age. 
As a matter of fact, I know a gentleman, aged 76, with a, with a magnificent body. Recently I saw pictures of him at 32, and I can tell you he looks better now. The key to building muscle mass is a regular exercise program, which includes both cardiovascular and muscle building workouts. Lean body mass helps to burn more calories and maintain good shape well into our later years. Cleansing. Toxic substances are an unfortunate fact of life in the modern world where they routinely pervade our food, water, and air. Poisons enter our systems and become stored in adipose and nerve tissue. Over time, these chemicals accumulate to dangerous levels which in turn impair immune function and reproductive capacity. Kugler explains some of the harm. Animals in the wild are becoming endangered, not because man is killing them, but simply because they are being born neutral. They cannot reproduce. A couple of years ago, there were hearings in the United States House in Washington where an, an Ohio Senate reproductive scientist, I mean, where, where an Ohio state, I'm sorry, reproductive scientist, uh, started the talk by saying, Every man in this room is only half the man his grandfather used to be. It's due to the fact that over many years, these so-called safe levels of poisons and foods and everything else, and I believe that these safe levels don't really exist, are absorbed right into the body. Even swimming in slightly polluted water will cause harm as body tissues absorb the toxic chemicals. We have an accumulation of toxic chemicals that comes from pesticides, everyday chemicals and drugs, which we consume in great quantities. So they accumulate in ever-increasing amounts. They then affect reproductive capacity and immune function. Over 450 publications show that this is so. While we can't avoid exposure to toxins, we can eliminate them from our bodies. Kugler suggests using method, a technique developed by the Foundation for the Advancement in Science and Education in Los Angeles. The procedure begins by getting normally stationary fats moving with niacin. The vitamin will make the skin flush although there are some types that do not cause flushing. Small amounts should be taken at first, with the goal of building up gradually to one or two grams. A half hour to an hour later, exercise or a sauna is employed to induce sweating so that toxins will exit the fat cells, re-enter the blood, and leave the body through the skin. It is important to supplement the program with antioxidants and to take in only good fats via quality vegetable oils. The later contain essential fatty acids that help normalize hormone reactions in the body through prostaglandin formations. Additionally, organically grown food and filtered water will help prevent the absorption of more chemical of more toxic chemicals. Using this approach, Cougar maintains the body will become free of most accumulated poisons within two or three weeks, and it will maintain far greater health. Dr. Stephen Sinatra, author of Optimal Health, a natural life-saving pres prescription for body and mind, recommends bowel cleansing as a way to prevent and reverse many diseases, from arthritis to cancer, to heart disease and psoriasis. He says that a diet rich in raw foods such as apples, celery, cabbage, and broccoli 
has a high enzyme content that will promote bowel cleansing. This will help to break down food in the stomach rather than overwork the intestines. Additionally, digestive enzyme supplements can be taken. Probiotics, the friendly bacteria found in bifidobacterium and lactobacilli, will help the bowel. Sauerkraut in a natural food source of these probiotics. Sauerkraut is naturally rich. In addition, 8 to 10 glasses of water a day should be taken. Another nutrient helpful to the digestive tract is aloe vera. Going on a short one or three day fast will give the bowel a rest so the body can rejuvenate itself. A fast of water and apple juice is especially cleansing to the bottle, to the bowel. It goes without saying that processed foods such as breads, uh, white table sugar, caffeine, and alcohol should be avoided. Oh, by the way, if you're going to do a juice fast, you want to do it for a short period of time only. Uh, I recommend one day, but. For severe cases, you can go, you know, up to uh, three days, uh, but you should take uh, optimal high amounts of supplements, nutritional supplements, vitamins, minerals, and uh, make sure the apple juice is uh, a freshly squeezed, unpasteurized, organic source. I also uh, understand that a fresh lemon uh, added to this beverage will, um, in moderation of course, will accelerate the, um, the cleansing process. All right, letting go of stress. Stress, physical, mental, and emotional, is an unavoidable part of life. While some stress is tolerable, even motivating, too much can overwhelm us. Then stress becomes distress and causes us to become emotionally dysfunctional, physically ill, and prematurely gray. It is important to release excess stress, not by taking medications that add toxins and more stress to the system and only mask the problem, but by detoxifying our bodies and confronting stress-provoking situations head-on. Moreover, we should incorporate relaxation techniques, positive imaginary and imagery, positive imagery, and use nutrients that pro promote calm. Metabolism speeds up during periods of stress. Hence, nutrients are lost at a faster than normal rate and need to be replaced. These include vitamin C, adrenal gland extract, B complex vitamins, particularly pantothenic acid, and a full range of minerals with an emphasis on phosphorus and calcium. Meditation takes a little discipline but can yield great rewards. One simple method is to sit or lie quietly for five to ten minutes during the day. Let go of any thoughts that enter into the mind. Concentrate on breathing in positive thoughts and breathing out negative ones. Look for tense points in the face and body and mentally imagine those tensions draining out. Begin with the foot and work your way up the calves, knees, thighs, and so on. You will feel deeply relaxed and recharged. This is especially good to do first thing in the morning. When first arriving home, from work or just before bedtime. Positive imagery stimulates the immune system to health and is a useful adjunct to other therapies, reports Dr. Sinatra. What happens is people develop endorphins and neurotransmitters which can increase tranquility. Dr. Sinatra explains how he uses his technique to help others. When you use guided imagery, the person should be relaxed. Sometimes I'll have the person lie on the floor with a small pillow under the head, eyes are closed, and there is a focus on breathing. I may ask him or her to say a mantra, sometimes the word one. 
or if the person is spiritual, perhaps the Lord is my shepherd, whatever is comfortable. I'll put my client in a meditative state where thoughts come in and out but are not focused upon. Dr. Sinatra then varies the focus of the session according to his client's condition. Uh, one of my patients imagined a shark eating his cancer. He literally imagined it eating away at his Hodgkin's disease. If a person has heart disease, I may ask him or her to imagine a ballet dancer inside inside the blood vessels dancing and at the same time stretching the blood vessels apart. Of course you can vary this uh, imaginary uh, mind projection. Most of the time I'll ask a person to think of his or her own image as a way of developing personal power. Sometimes it's an animal. One fellow chose an eagle which soared to great heights, taking burdens off his shoulders. If a patient doesn't want to choose the image, then I'll put him or her in a meditative state and have the person ask for an image to see what the right brain produces. Frequently, people will imagine amazing things. Dr. Sinatra adds that positive imagery might not work the first time, but that once a person person gets starts, once a person starts getting used to the meditative position with the breathing, the mantra, and the image, he or she starts to see results. Most people look forward to positive imagery sessions and practice it once or twice a day for about 15 minutes. Um, so that concludes uh, this week's um, uh, monologue on Health Talk. Um, Reverend Dr. Bill, um, would you like to make any comments about uh, this week's Health Talk? Um, anything you want to say? you have any input? Okay. Okay, listeners. Now let's go to commercial with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman before we go. Um, before Actually, before we conclude, well, we'll see. We might have time. We might have time. Uh, we might have time for genetically modified foods. Okay. Um... Okay, we'll do genetically modified foods after we go to commercial with uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen. Are you reaching your fitness goals working out on your own or with a training partner? Has your health club fulfilled any of the promises made before they took that expensive annual membership fee? After you paid the expensive annual health club membership fee, does it include any personal training? Save money and avoid the high cost of one-on-one -on -one personal trainers, nutritional consultants, health club sales packages. With this complete comprehensive fitness program with the website Personal Trainer. And are you sick and tired of all those low flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off? especially you ladies with long, thick hair. If so, then power your shower. These imported shower heads cannot be found in American stores. The website Personal Trainer and Power Your Shower can be found at www.megalife21.com. That's megalife21.com. Newsletter Censored has been taking on the five taboos of American life, sex, politics, religion, health, and child rearing for over 30 years. Newsletter Censored will give you the tools to defeat conservatives, to uh, handle right-wing counterfeit Christians. If you'd like to learn more about Newsletter Censored, then go to newslettercensored.com. 
newslettercensored.com. Okay, now let's go to our last health talk topic, genetically modified foods. Okay, listeners, uh, this week's health talk is called Genetically Altering the World's Food. Um, On January 14th, after an eight-year scientific review, Canada rejected Monsanto Corporation's request for approval of its genetically altered milk hormone, RBGH, a drug that makes dairy cows produce 10% more milk than normal. This was a serious setback for Monsanto because RBGH was the company's first genetically engineered product, and Monsanto had hoped international acceptance of RBGH would smooth the way for its other genetically engineered farm crops like cotton, tomatoes, potatoes, rice, corn, and soybeans. The approval process for RBGH in Canada became an embarrassing political fiasco when Canadian health officials claim Monsanto had tried to bribe them, which the company denied and government scientists testified that they were being pressured by higher-ups to approve RBGH against their better scientific judgment. Ultimately, Canada gave a thumbs down to RBGH because, as the product label acknowledges, it can cause utter infections, painful, debilitating foot disorders, and reduce lifespan in treated cows. U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the use of RBGH in U.S. dairy cows in November 1993. Without taking a position on the issue of cruelty to animals, Monsanto will not reveal how widely the drug has been adopted by U.S. dairy farmers. Monsanto says it will appeal the RBGH decision within the Canadian government. But more importantly, Monsanto will ask the World Health Organization's Codex Alimentarius to declare RBGH safe when Codex meets in Rome this coming summer. If Codex issues the statement that Monsanto wants, under the World Trade Organization's rules, Canada will lose its right to ban the use of RBGH within its borders and Monsanto will be one step closer to its goal. At bottom, this is what free trade, quote-unquote, is about. Freeing transnational corporations from control by nation states. Codex Alimentarius is widely perceived to be dominated not by public-spirited health specialists, but by scientists aligned with the interests of transnational corporations. Despite the recent setback for RBGH in Canada, Monsanto is pressing ahead with its plan to dominate world agriculture by selling genetically modified seeds, a plan it is pursuing with powerful aid from the highest level of the U.S. government. Both inside and outside the U.S., Monsanto is selling two basic varieties of genetically modified seeds. Roundup Ready, quote unquote, seeds have been genetically modified to withstand a heavy soaking with Monsanto's best-selling herbicide, uh, Roundup Glyphosate, and a group of seeds implanted with a BT gene which produces a pesticidal toxin in every cell of the resulting plant. Caterpillars that eat any part of such a plant will die, at least until the whole caterpillar population develops resistance to the Bt toxin. Within the U.S., genetically altered crops are rapidly coming into widespread use. In 1995, no genetically modified crops were grown for commercial sale. Three years later, in 1998, 
Every three million acres of genetically modified crops were grown worldwide, more than 50 million acres of them in the U.S. To allow this rapid change to occur with a minimum of resistance from consumers, the FDA has declared that genetically modified foods do not need to be labeled, thus depriving consumers of the opportunity to make an informed choice in the grocery store. You cannot refuse to buy what you cannot identify. It is presently estimated that some 300,000 items in U.S. grocery stores already contain genetically modified organisms. Monsanto has announced that by the year 2000, and this statement was made, of course, prior to that year, 100% of U.S. soybeans, which amounts to around 60 million acres, will be genetically modified. Actually, 100% really means something like 99.9%. .9%. Even if Monsanto reaches its 100% goal, there will continue to be a small acreage devoted to organically grown traditional soybeans. However, if Monsanto has its way, even these organically grown, non-genetically modified soybeans will become difficult to identify. Last year, when the U.S. Department of Agriculture proposed national standards to define what organically grown, quote-unquote, means, Monsanto and USDA proposed to allow genetically modified crops to be labeled organic. After USDA received 300,000 letters of opposition from an angry public. USDA and Monsanto both withdrew, withdrew the proposal. But three years from now, Monsanto will be back urging the government to allow the organic, quote-unquote, label on genetically modified crops. If USDA goes along with Monsanto's plan, then the organic, quote-unquote, label will become meaningless and consumers will have to trust their grocers to supply soybeans that have not been genetically modified. But few grocers will have any way to know. According to a series of reports by Bill Lambrecht in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Monsanto's overarching plan is to gain approval for genetically modified crops in Europe, then use the European Imprimatur to sell its technology to Europe's former colonies in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. It won't be easy. In Ireland, Great Britain, France, and India, farmer-led uprisings have burned and destroyed Monsanto's test, pilot, test plots. In India, Monsanto is growing genetically modified plants in greenhouses constructed of bulletproof plastic. Monsanto insists its goal is, quote, doing well by doing good, unquote. But farmers outside the United States are deeply suspicious. Of particular concern is Monsanto's latest genetic technique called the Technology Protection System, commonly known as quote, Terminator Technology, unquote. Developed with taxpayer money by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, but patented by a Mississippi-based seed company that Monsanto has recently purchased, Terminator Technology is a genetic technique that renders the seeds of crops sterile after one or two years. This assures that Monsanto's seeds cannot be illegally saved and replanted year after year. With Terminator technology, anyone who becomes dependent upon Monsanto's genetically modified seed will have to come back to Monsanto year after year to purchase new seed. By this means, Monsanto will gain a substantial measure of control over the food supply of any nation that widely adopts the company's genetic technologies. It is not a conspiracy, merely a shrewd business venture, but it is 
clear that Monsanto's goal is the effective control of many of the staple crops that presently feed the world. From its own perspective, the U.S. government evidently believes Monsanto's goal is worth supporting. According to Bill Lambrecht of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, when Irish Prime Minister Bertie Ahern arrived in the United States in 1998 for a St. Patrick's Day visit, he was met by Sandy Berger, the director of the U.S. National Security Council. The topic of conversation at lunch was not peace in war-torn Ireland, but Ireland's pivotal vote in a pending European community decision on Monsanto's genetically modified corn. Lambrecht reports that when Monsanto flew a group of Irish journalists to the U.S. to help them prepare for the debate over genetically modified foods, their trip included a stop in the Oval Office at the White House, an inner sanctum that few visitors to Washington ever see. When the French were reluctant to allow Monsanto's seeds to sprout on French soil, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright at the time and U.S. Trade Representative Charlene Bar Barshevsky intervened on Monsanto's behalf. When the French still refused to yield, President Clinton at that time personally took up the matter with French Prime Minister Lionel Jospin and gave him an earful, quote unquote. Lambrick writes, when that didn't work, Vice President Gore followed up with a phone call to French Prime Minister. Ultimately, ultimately the French gave in to the steady high level pressure. Uh, wherever Monsanto seeks to sow, the U.S. government clears the ground, writes Lambrecht. Who calls the U.S. government Monsanto's most powerful ally? From the White House and the National Security Council on down, Lambrecht writes, the apparatus of the U.S. government worked this year. Okay, this statement was made uh, in 1998. On behalf of biotechnology, for Monsanto at this moment, it is like having an Olympic basketball team with several Michael Jordans. We are speculating, but it appears to us that the U.S. government may view genetically modified crops as a powerful new arm of U.S. foreign policy. Nations whose staple foods are grown from seed that they must purchase year after year from a handful of U.S. corporations are nations likely to see the world the way the U.S. wants them to see it. When asked, they are likely to play ball, whether they want to or not. A new world order indeed. Okay, readers who would like to become active on this issue are urged to read the new publication, Monsanto Monitor, which is now being published in the Netherlands, available via mail or email, biotech at aseed.antenna. Dot NL dot or write post office box nine two zero six six one zero nine zero A B comma Amsterdam the Netherlands or go to www dot antenna dot dot NL uh, <clears throat> forward slash AC And then we have here um, Canada's Rural Advancement Foundation International, uh, RAFI at www.rafi.org. Um, uh, or you can email at rafi at rafi.org. Um, and then we have a North Carolina phone number, 919-542. Uh, one three nine six. Okay. Um, physicians and scientists against genetically engineered food at www.psagef.org uh, <coughs> uh, forward 
slash sitemap.htm. Then we have the campaign for food safety at www.purefood.org. And their telephone number is 218-226-4164. Their email is alliance at mrperiod.net. And uh, we have food and water, uh, 389 Vermont Route 215, Walden, Vermont, 05873. Their phone number is uh, 802-563-3300. Um, let's see here. Uh, these big-name products include genetically modified ingredients, folks. Listeners, uh, we have here Coca-Cola, which contains uh, corn syrup and or aspartame. Uh, we have a product called Fritos, which is made from the genetically modified corn. We have Green Giant Harvest Burgers, which is made from genetically modified soy. McDonald's French Fries, genetically modified potato. Nestle's Chocolate, which has the soy in it. Uh, Caro, K-A-R-O, corn syrup, made from corn. Of course, Nutrasweet, aspartame. I don't know why they call it Nutrasweet. That's made from Monsanto. Kraft Salad Dressing, which has genetically modified canola oil. Fleischmann's Margarine, genetically modified soy. Similac, infant formula from, made from genetically modified soy. Lando Lake Butter, oh really? RB contains the hormone RBGH. Cabot Creamery Butter has that also. If you want to avoid genetically modified products entirely, stay away from non-organic tomatoes, potatoes, corn, soy, canola, and yellow squash. Avoid corn syrup and fructose, which are in almost all beverages and sodas, even health food brands, and in almost all sweet products, yogurt and aspirin. Avoid non-organic corn oil, cornstarch, cornmeal, baking soda, baking powder, uh, glycose syrup. Avoid soy, soy flour in baked goods, pizzas, cookies, cakes, pasta, fillers, and meat products. For example, Big Mac. This is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored. And you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative uh, so-called Christian. Censored. That's all you need. Read it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet.